Hi everyone. There's a lot of conjecture I've heard about whether Orville Dam is filled up um, too much too soon. So I took a look at the data and I took a look at DWR statements and I thought it'd be interesting to share that with you. Like I said, a lot of people have a bad feeling. It just seems like this is fuller than it should be. Um, social media has been uh, rife with concern and rumors for um, other reasons as well. As you know, this week DWR reached out to the Sheriff's Department and to Assemblyman Gallagher and others with reassurances that all is well, and then those folks subsequently issued statements to the public that all is well. Plus, we have a DWR press release that assures us things are fine as well, and aren't we lucky to have all this water? They plan to go to level 900, only one foot below the emergency spillway. That barrage of assurances that all is well concerned me a bit. That was just a bit too many assurances. From state representatives, from the sheriff, mainstream media had several stories, their own press releases, a certain YouTuber. So let's just take a closer look. Assemblyman Gallagher issued a statement that um, DWR's operation team are not concerned mainly because most of the snowpack in the Feather River watershed has already run off this far into the year. So I just jumped on the site um, that's DWR's CDEC with the snow content and what it shows is that 60% still remains for uh, of the April 1st average, and it's still 133% for normal of normal for this time of year. This uh, thick blue line is the current, with the other two being a couple years previous. So most, if most is 51%, most is not gone. 60% still remains. So that's a damn lie. Mr. Gallagher also um, said that he had learned that the current outflow ability of the Hyatt power plant is 13,000 CFS. Now I thought that was kind of interesting because in looking at the outflow data for the last couple weeks from May 4th till the 18th, it has not been uh, operating at nearly 13,000 CFS until the uh, 17th yesterday. And um, then it did. Oh, day before yesterday, and then it did. He also said he had learned that inflows will reduce after the next five days, and since that came out, there's at least one more storm forecast for the middle of the week next week, I believe, and that significant investments have been made to improve forecasting. Now this is a press release from DWR's site published on March 31st, saying that they expected to use the main spillway on April 2nd. At that time, the reservoir was 853 feet, and they expect, expected main spillway releases between 10,000 and 20,000 CFS, with another 10,000 coming from um, the Hyatt, making for a total of 30,000 CFS. But the next sentence is the interesting part for this point. DWR may increase releases to the Feather River again later this week between 40 and 60,000 CFS to prepare for forecasted inflows. So at this time, they were, they were forecasting some increased inflows. Well, did that happen? Not too much. After that period, again, that was the 31st, so now we're looking for about two weeks after that period, and there's only one day where the inflows jumped up to 33,000. Now, it seems to me if they can under forecast inflows, if they think more is coming and it doesn't, then they could also have the situation where they think less is coming, but more shows up. Another thing Assemblyman Gallagher learned is the goal is to fill the lake to an elevation of 900 feet. And the last year the lake was full was in 2011, other than the infamous 2017. So let's just take a look at those two statements. 
This is a DWR press release from May 16th, last week, and you'll notice in the yellow highlighted portion, they carefully word this statement. It's common for Lake Oroville to stay relatively full during the summer months after an above average water year like the one we're experiencing in 2018-19. In 2010-11, another very wet year, the reservoir was filled to near capacity or capacity for the entire month of July. Okay, let's pick through this. This is a graph of the water years, uh, various water years that you can see listed here. The 2010-2011 one that they specifically mention is this bold black line. And you can see that, as they said, it was indeed at 900 feet or very close to it for the month of July and a portion of June. But you will notice it only got there about the first week in June. This area where we are now, mid-May or so, it was substantially lower right in here than now. But we do notice that water year 2011-2012, the bold pink line here, it peaked a little earlier. And actually around May 1st, it was at 900. We're going to look at 13 years of water history, and this is the only time this has occurred. But this is um, a selection of four years, and only one of these is applicable. In 1992-93, the level continued to rise until about um, June 1st, where it peaked. It was less than 900 feet, but it did peak close to full um, right about the 1st of June. And I just want to point out also that at that time, the dam was only 15 years old. And then this is current from just a couple days ago, well, from yesterday, Saturday. So what's interesting about this is 2016, we've just passed it by. We've just, our current year line has intersected with the 2016 line and surpassed it by, a, at this time, a little bit. And then you'll notice that the, the 17 water year when the incident occurred, or 16, 17 water year when the incident occurred, and 2016 are both on the graph as well. And this is a little bit closer look of that line crossing. Also, just to make note of it, the 2016 water year was very wet, and you see that toward the end, as we went into 2017, it jumped up. Then we enter to the left of the screen, the magenta line, 2017. And about mid-January, we got a storm with huge inflows, which kicks the line straight up, as you see. They didn't start releasing water right away, at least not in sufficient quantities. Although at that time, there was no anomaly in the spillway. It was in playing catch up for that, for that delay, that they had to go to 150,000 CFS. And then there was the issue that we all know very well, of course. This is another water year, or selection of water years. One of the things that's interesting about this is it is from their relicensing. This is what they submitted to FERC as showing typical water management for wet year and dry year. So you will notice here this late May period that we're coming into now, the wettest year, which was in, for this graph, water year 1995, 95-96, they are right at about 890, where we are now, right now. They do not approach 900, even in their example wet year, until getting, looks like third week of June or so, getting close to July 1st, right in that, that area. So that's a little bit different than what we are, uh, what we are approaching right now. So just to put all those together on a chart, has the lake been at 900 before June 1st? Once in 13 years, in early May of the 2011-2012 water year. 
That's not common. Once in 13 years is not common. But let's look again at their very careful wording. It's common for Lake Oroville to stay relatively full during the summer months. Well, that is true. That is their water use pattern. The, one that, the only one that would make sense for the climatology of the state of California. They did not say it was common for the, dam, for the water level to be so high so early in the year. In 2010-2011, another very wet year, the reservoir was filled to near capacity or capacity for the entire month of July. True, but the month of July is very different climatologically in California than the month of May is. In May, there's still runoff from snow melt and there is still uh, some rain falling. So the other question I had was, is it allowed? Are they busting some parameter or is it permissible? This line that I've highlighted in yellow here shows the area that they have to maintain during the um, flood season for flood control. And then this line ramps up. They are allowed to keep more and more water up until the maximum, which does occur about May 1st. So Yes, it is allowed, it is permitted by the Corps of Engineers plan. But it rains in May. And this graphic shows um, the average precipitation and then it also shows by a bar graph here, the precip. And you can see readily that May and June have very different expected uh, rainfall rates and then as in July it goes to nearly nothing. So when those 900s were being hit in late June or July you can see here by the precip that's typical how that's a very reasonable occurrence. Is it a reasonable occurrence to be hitting that level in mid to late May? Is it wise in the current conditions and what are the current conditions? I'll point out in this great photograph um, the folks working here at the end of the spillway doing something and the um, wet area up here in about the same part, place that the failure occurred before it appears. So what we have is a 50 year old poorly maintained dam with many known deficiencies and I just made one slide of this. I just grabbed a couple. Um, I think that uh, that's a presentation all by itself that I'll do at some point. But Bob B. said, it's very, we certainly respect him very much, very well respected fellow, said there are many very serious, or there are very serious problems with the head gates. There is a lot of corrosion and there are large cracks in two gate control tendons. Some of the gates don't even open and close all the way. They're like a refrigerator doors that just stay ajar. And that is from July 2017. Then from the uh, DSOD inspection of in August 2016, and this is the last DSOD inspection before the incident, um, they show the flood control structure. They show the crack up here. They say it has extended downward over a long period of time. It will likely stop at this location. If not, conditions should be evaluated. And then additionally, out by where the photograph is in the report, it says, diagonal track on the left pier for gate 8 appears to have extended to the opposite chamfer below the old telltale paint mark as evidenced by the length of the recently applied red telltale paint, photograph 14. We have black and white photographs so we kind of miss out on that. Um, that is before such huge quantities of water were put through there um, for the uh, February incident time frame, the January-February incident time frame in 2017. The main spillway. There is much conjecture, but not too much knowledge about the condition of the main spillway. Uh, what we do know is that lifts were, take, were photographed in March before the spillway was used, having a look at these gates. Lifts were photographed again after the gates were used, doing the same thing. The crack that they're talking about, if I'm not mistaken, is in the center pier between the two sets of four gates. 
And then another inspection report talks about some problems with gate number eight, which as you're facing the structure looking upstream, as we are in these photographs, is the far right hand one. Um, and you see people all over the spillway checking everything, generally focused on cracks and corners. Uh, you see water coming out in some various places here that don't appear to be um, expected. And we don't know. We don't know what's going on. It, it, it seems from the amount of scrutiny that something unanticipated may have occurred. I don't know if that were sensor readings that they didn't expect or if they're seeing some effects on the spillway or some water coming out they didn't expect, but it does seem that something unanticipated occurred and that a huge amount of scrutiny is being given to it. Now there's also a brand new emergency spillway just finished. In fact, on May 2nd, it looks like they still had some concrete to place here. Why is that important? Concrete is at its least strong the day it's poured. Once it cures the next day, it's at its least strong. It becomes progressively stronger over time. So it would be much better if a year or two went by at the least before the emergency spillway was used. Um, the concrete's very new. And even though, at least on the main spillway, and probably here as well, they used what they call a high early mix, which is concrete that comes up to strength sooner, still the process of, of concrete is that it cures and becomes harder over time. So this wouldn't be a great time to risk the use of the emergency spillway and perhaps have some damage that wouldn't have occurred a couple years from now. There's also a wet weather year in progress, and the rains are still going. So we're going well into the third week of May with rains. Um, it just appears that there's that wet weather pattern that sometimes happens for you all in California. And we already talked about the snowpack. 60% of it left. That's a lot. So guys, thanks for watching. I, use, I leave it to you to draw your own conclusions about um, whether this is good water management on their part. And um, stay watchful, stay safe. Thank you.